So just before I start reading, again, I said this last week, in, in this chapter, Kardec with his intention to be as complete as possible and try not to leave anything out, he dissects um, the mediumship to its most smallest um, details going to things that becomes even harder to see the differentiation between A and B <clears throat> kind of mediums. As if Kardec is really trying to not leave anything or anyone outside of this list. And yet, I'm going to read again, as I've read at the beginning of session when we read this through this chapter, something is very important to the Kardec Lewis for us here. When it says right at the beginning of the chapter, besides the mediumistic categories already enumerated, mediumship offers infinite varieties that includes what may be called special mediums, those gifted with still undefined particular aptitudes, apart from the qualities and knowledge of the manifest spirit. So he is confessing to us here that we are just taking the very first steps to understand this human faculty that through his work, extensive work, almost 200 years ago, he was able to create this didactic uh, terminology and differentiations of aptitudes and leadership to help us understand the phenomena. But even with his story at that time, there are those who you call special mediums because they don't fit the little boxes that he created. Again, didactic reels make those boxes, right? And as much as we, we try to divide things, there is a gray area between black and white and very often that gray area is much bigger than the black and the white itself or it's almost like the the the, the white and the black doesn't really exist and i say that because usually mediums have multiple aptitudes very often medium is able to perform different things different tasks so when kardec break down types of mediums, he's not saying that a medium who does A cannot do B, cannot do C, do A only. It, on the contrary, right in the, begin, right in the beginning of this chapter also, and I'm gonna read now, he says that very often a medium has uh, multiple um, faculties. It will develop one more than other. It will lean towards usually uh, more in one area than another. But when needed, very often, a medium will expand, expand its potential and will use all the faculties that usually it doesn't use. Um, <clears throat> and you have to remember that also in this chapter, that leaves very clear that very often does the medium him or herself does not recognize, is not aware of all of its faculties. That very often in an organizing and where the mediumship is done the right way, the mentors of their house, the spirits workers of this house know the potentials, the ability of the mediums of that house more than the mediums themselves. Okay, so that's very important to keep that in mind. And when you start to break down all those kinds of mediums here, don't think that a person, a medium, is only this, only that. Kardec is just trying to provide to us as many types of mediumship that are there as possible for our understanding. And we are smart enough not to put anything into boxes anymore, I hope. <coughs> 
Okay. 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 All right, 193. Mm -hmm. 193, according to the type and specialty of the communications, verse making meetings, these who most easily receive communications in verse, very common for bad verse, very rare for good verse. Poetic mediums, although they do not receive verse per se, they do receive communications of a vaporous, sentimental style without any harsh quality about them. They are more able than the others at expressing tender and affectionate sentiments. Everything in their communications is vague, and it would not be worthwhile to require anything precise from them. Very common. Go ahead. P positive mediums. Generally, their communications display a clean and precise character, which spontaneously lends itself to circumstantial details and exact teachings, very rare. Literary mediums, those who do not display the vague tone of poetic mediums or the down-to-earth tone of positive mediums, but who write with sarcasty. Their style is correct, elegant, and frequently of notable eloquence. Thanks. Okay. So here are uh, some examples of why do I say the Kadax really trying to break down to the smallest possible piece of the puzzle over here. But it's very hard to, to label one one other medium in accordance to this classification that he gives to us here. And one important thing that we you must to keep in mind that there is true to tango here, right? There is the medium, mm -hmm. but there is there is also the spirit who is indeed the one who is actually writing. Okay. <clears throat> and um, we see. Um, messages that are really good in content and extremely short, straight to the point. And we see some messages that are really good and is very poetic. It, it uses a lot of metaphors. It uses a lot of um, words to say, to say what they want to say. Is the style of the medium in association with the style of, of, of the spirit itself. We see messages that go straight to the point. You see uh, messages that use the likes to teach through an example, through a pair of parables like Jesus used to teach. Um, let's assume that being a conscious medium that we have a lot to do with the style of the medium itself. Um, <clears throat> again, if it's a conscious medium, the, the medium receives the thought, goes through its cognitive, cognitive functions, and it writes what it's interpret of that thought. So if I'm the type, the person that I like to write with as, with as much synthesis as possible, use as, as minimal word as possible. That's how I will put in the paper the thought that I receive. If I am more with a, a more academic person, I use more of academia kind of style of writing to put in a piece of paper the thoughts that I received. So that has a lot to do with the, with the medium itself, especially if it's a conscious, a little less with a semi-conscious, and a little bit less if it's an unconscious. But that we still have the the minimal characteristic of the medium him or herself in every message. That's why we say that every message will have a little bit of the medium here. Even the, the best of the best of the mediums 
will not, the master you, you're not gonna be absolutely 100% free of the, of the medium itself. There will be a little bit over there. And perhaps that little bit over there will be exactly what those differentiations the Kardec makes over here. Uh, to be a more verse or more poetic or more positive or more literary and all, and all of those things. And again, very important, we're not talking about the quality of the message. We're talking about the deliverance of the message. The message may be extremely good or may be extremely bad and it's still being delivered with these differentiations of styles over here. Okay? Is that clear? Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> Incorrect mediums? Incorrect mediums. Okay. Those who obtain very good communications and thoughts displaying irreproachable morality, but whose style is diffused, incorrect, and full of repetitions and improper terms. The material incorrectness of style usually stems from the medium's lack of education. This type of medium consequently does not serve as a good instrument for the spirit. However, the spirit attaches little importance to this matter, since for it thought is what is essential, and so it leaves the medium free to provide the appropriate form. The same does not apply to erroneous and illogical ideas that may be communicated, which are always an indication of the low evolutionary degree of the manifesting spirit. Historical mediums. Thanks, I could stop here. Okay. Um, because this is important. Uh, last week, um, Renato asked regarding um, language barrier. And I think he is, when dealing with incorrect mediums, uh, and Kardec says, you know, the incorrect medium is, is one who will receive very good messages, okay, with higher um, moral content, but the deliverance is not the best because of the difficulties of that uh, medium to put in the paper the thoughts that he or she received. It may be due to a lack of education, as it mentioned over here, or else may be a language barrier. I think this is one example in which um, receiving message in a different language in which we we do have the domain of the language, but it's not the same as receiving in one read in, in your own original um, language. So for example, of course, for us Brazilians um, grew up uh, in Brazil, learned English over here as an adult, we will always have a, a difficulty, a lack uh, of express uh, all the thoughts in English uh, as easily as a native of the land who grew up here, had all the education here, and um, is able to, to maneuver to the lexicon of the language much, much easier than, uh, than an immigrant, especially an immigrant who arrived here already an adult, already you know, at a certain age, it becomes a little bit more challenge. But the good thing is that although it could be a problem for, it is a problem for the medium, it's not a problem for the spirit. The spirit finds a good channel to, to pass its, its thoughts. A good medium who is able to receive their thoughts and put in a paper, the spirits will we'll use that medium without any problems. The medium naturally, we're gonna have put more effort in self-educating, um, overcoming the, as much as possible the, the language barrier <clears throat> to minimize that difficulty of expressing or to put in a piece of paper the thoughts received from the medium. 
but from the spirit, I'm sorry. But the spirit itself is content to find a good medium and pass the thoughts to that medium. And um, naturally, the means of it, to put that thought on a paper will be diff a, little bit, a little bit more difficult for lack of, of education or for language barrier, as very often uh, our cases here. Okay. 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 Historical mediums. Historian. Hmm? Historian. Oh, historian, I'm sorry. Historian mediums. Those who have a special aptitude for historical dissertations. Like all others, this faculty does not depend on the medium's own knowledge, for there are uneducated individuals, even children, who address subjects far beyond their reach, a rare variety of positive medium, scientific mediums. We do not say scientists because these may be very uneducated. Despite this, however, they are especially able to receive communications related to the sciences. Medical mediums, their, speci their specialty is that of most easily serving spirits as interpreters for medical prescriptions. They must not be confused with healing mediums because they do nothing more than transmit the spirit's thought and do not exert any influence in and of themselves quite often. Religious mediums, these who are more especially receive communications of a religious character or address questions related to religion, notwithstanding their own beliefs and practices. Philosophical and moralist mediums, those whose communications generally address moral issues or profound philosophy, very common for moral issues. All these nuances comprise a diversity in the aptitudes of good mediums. As for those who have special aptitudes for certain scientific, historical, medical, and other communications above their cur current reach, we can be certain that they possess such knowledge in another existence and have retained it in a latent state in a latent state, thereby making a part of the celebrial elements needed for a spirit's communication. These elements are what are what make it easy for the spirit to transmit its own ideas, since these mediums are for the spirit instruments who are more intelligent and malleable than an ignorant one would be. Congratulations. Thanks. Thank so I'll let you read all, all this because the only comment that I would make is the one that Eras is making here for us. There is nothing for me to add to what Eras has just told, told us here. <coughs> João used the example of Mozart with music in, in the previous um, lessons that we just had. If Mozart comes back to this, to reincarnate with us now, no, it's an adult man, 2021, and for many different reasons, does not have access to to music, to play an instrument, uh, or anything like that. For many different reasons, um, Mozart, I'm sorry, the spirit that plays played the role of Mozart, and now is playing the role, let's say, of a medical doctor in, in a New York hospital, did not lose um, his mus musical talent. It would be, um, it would be against the natural laws that tells me if I worked for something and I conquered as a tiny spirit, it's mine. It's not going to be taken away for, for us. Otherwise, God would be unjust. If I work hard to develop the, the music skills and the, the spirit that played the 
the the whole of the role of Mozart. He conquered that, or she conquered whatever you want to use here, conquered that talent. It's not a gift. Otherwise, God would not be just again. He worked, he developed the skills, perhaps in multiple reincarnations to be as great as he was, and certainly to come in a certain age, young age and be able to pull out all that musicality is because he had conquered that. And now it's such a strong part of his makeup as an Italian spirit that by age six, he was already ready to, to write symphonies, right? <clears throat> But it could be latent in the next reincarnation. And let's just say that that spirit that now, that was played the role of Mozart, reincarnate now, is playing the role of a medical doctor in a New York hospital, happens to be also in mediums and joins, joins SGNY and doesn't know anything about music as the doctor, not as the tennis spirit. But when in a mediumistic trance, the mentors of SGNY know who that spirit is, knows the, the, the musicality latent in that spirit, and may use it. So in a state of trance, a mediumistic trance, that spirit may receive um, communications of musicians in the spiritual world because that will be the most suitable medium in our group to, to deal with music-related issues. And the same for someone who has developed the, the scientific or the, the medical or the religious and has all those attributes latent in themselves, not being used as incarnation. They don't know, we don't know, but the members of the house, they know. And then when they have to pair a medium uh, to a spirit to deliver some kind of message, they know how to make that pairing. And that is the great importance of doing mediumship at the right place, surrounded by the, by, by the right um, spirits, because then things flow easily and, and things are done the right way. Now let's assume that in SGNY, this doctor never show up and we don't have amongst us, the mediums, someone with a um, with that history as the Italian spirit of involvement with music. The match cannot be delivered? Yes, it can. It's just not, not gonna be as good. It's going to be a tremendous amount of difficulty for that spirit. And of course, when it's time to, to go from thought, energy, to words in a paper, it's not going to be the same quality if it was done by a, a medium who has in its memory files, let's say, the musical abilities. But it will be developed, it will be delivered to the best of now the spirits again, the spirits gonna gonna use what they have and do the best with what they have. But naturally, if you have someone with that aptitude, that will be the one, that will be the, the best pairing, the spirit medium to deliver that message. So don't think that medium, let's say historians uh, just, by, by, by chance. No, they developed that skill. It's something that they conquered with their own effort. Not being used now, so they can conquer something else. But it's there and can be used in special situations. Does it make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, we continue. Okay. Mediums. Okay. Mediums for trivial and obscene communications. These words indicate the kind of communications 
that certain mediums habitually receive and the nature of the spirits who transmit them. Whoever has studied the spirit world in all its degrees knows that there are spirits whose perversity is on par with that of the most depraved individuals and who are pleased to express their thoughts through the grossest words. Others who are less abject content themselves with trivial expressions. It is understandable that these mediums should desire to free themselves from being preferred by such spirits and aspire to be like those who receive communications that never display an unseemly word. Only through a strange mental aberration and a lack of good sense could one believe that such language could come from good spirits. According to the medium's physical qualities. Okay, thanks, Let, let's talk a little bit about this. Um, obscene communication, trivial obscene communications. I've said repeatedly that a good medium is a good medium who make him or herself available to a great variety of spirits. And uh, spirits of triviality, spirits of obscene communication, we would agree that our spirits are in great need of help, great mm -hmm. need of assistance. So I don't find it to be such an aberration if we receive such spirits in, with the intention of being helpful to them. Naturally, when it comes to, uh, to writing, it becomes less obvious that the intention is, is, is to help. Because usually, in order to help, we will have a uh, psychophony when the spirits may bring its, its triviality, its um, uh, obscene communications, and we'll try to educate that spirit to the best of all ability. If uh, this, the methods of the house choose that we could be helpful that spirit. When it's come normally, frequently in, in, in psychographies, that is a red flag for that spirit, for that medium. That is something that medium needs to reevaluate him or herself. Why is this happening? Um, again, we don't know ourselves very well as a town spirit. You barely know ourselves a little bit on this kind of I, the, the town spirit, know a little bit of Elmo, not great depth of Elmo, and basically nothing of I at the, the turn spirit. But if I am a medium, and every time that I go into mediumist trance, all that comes out in writing is obscenities, is, is triviality, is I have to see what's going on over here. Naturally, I don't want it to happen, right? So it is a part of me that that is attracting this kind of spirit. Even if it's not the part of me that is Elmo in this incarnation, but definitely a part of me as the eternal spirit. So maybe it's an opportunity for me, for me to learn a little bit of myself as a eternal spirit and see things that perhaps needs to be worked on. Because as a, as, a, as a medium, with the little that I know now, I don't want to be receiving triviality. I don't want to be receiving um, obscene communications. It is a red flag for the, for the medium just to see what's going on, so you can improve on that. But again, uh, a good medium makes him or herself available to different types of mediums or of spirits. But if it's repeatedly, the thing here is if it's repeatedly, every time that I put myself on the minute mediumist trance, all that comes out is garbage. So I have to take a look at, at this. So it, it is a red flag. They have to be evaluated. Elmo, may I ask a question? This is Carol. 
Hi, Carol. Hi. Um, in that case, if the red flag is occurring often, what would the medium generally need to do? Would they cut the communication, disconnect right away, or would they tell, you know, let's say the consular, um, I can, I cannot go further with this communication. How would, how would that work? If you have have uh, something to say about that, thank you, Elmo. Yeah, here we're talking about uh, of of psych. Uh, psychographies, right? This chapter is all about psychographies. Ah, uh, right? yes, yes. So, yes, if, <laughs> if the medium is in the position to, and should be, a well-trained medium should be in the position of cutting off that communication. Uh, personally, okay, um, I would cut it off that communication, but I would seek um, advice from more experienced uh, mediums, um, see how can we could improve on that situation because I don't want to go into mediumist trends, get ready to write, and just write tri triviality and obscenities. Mm -hmm. uh, I would seek help and don't really know how that help would be. Perhaps even a work of, of a spiritual treatment or something, but it's not clear here how that would, how that help would 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 be. Oh, thank you for the explanation. Thank you, I appreciate it. No, if it is, let's say in a in a work of assistance, in a work of rescue, and 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 this is happening um, via psychophony, the the medium educated medium will express the triviality, they will express the obscenity without using words that are not proper to the ambient. And we hear very often spirits complaining that I cannot say what I want. And mm -hmm. I tell them, no, you, you can express your thoughts, you can express all your anger or your frustration, but we're gonna use words that, is, that are proper for this ambient. which must be very hard for the medium and imagine uh, to be able to, mm -hmm. to do this. And I must say, they do a great job, at least in our place. Yeah, thank you, <coughs> appreciate it. Thanks. Okay, continue. Can I just say something, Elmo? Oh, please. It's, um, hi, Kerk. Carol, do you remember? Uh, do you are you talking about the mediums, the mediums in the work that is done in, in the center or in general speaking? In general speaking, in, yeah. In, kind of in general, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, I, I before I started work with the uh, with the center, uh, I had tons of that, um, but they went away. It's just because I was never someone who was interested in that kind of thing from the beginning that's my personality um so i don't know if that it has something to do with it i also from the get-go what emma just said i don't know in my case i innately just ask for guidance if i was having this relationship with somebody that i didn't know just that's just just show me the best of your uh, translator or show me the best of your um, always asking for that, you know, and that kind of leads you. And that's when I think, I don't know if you remember, but in my case, right after this whole, this whole instances, this was maybe a couple of three days, a couple of days or three days, four days that this had this happened. The, uh, a voice clearly like there was someone right behind me and I was in my garden upstate with no one behind me. And he said to go look for a center of the woman in Queens. Now the name escapes me, but uh, they mentioned her name. They just said those words and I never heard of her, never heard of anything uh, that uh, there were uh, Alan Kardec studies happening in the US. So that was a, that was a, that was, I don't know, 12, 15 years ago. There was a, there was a revelation to me. So, um, 
and to my point again from the beginning i i have a very good um year for languages I, I i know and speak many and i never in any of them was interested in knowing bad words or curse words or interested in whatever they were doing with that kind of uh, media you know and i don't I, it, it, I guess it just comes from the type of medium who are receiving this type of communications if they have the tendency to like this kind of thing of course it's going to be much harder i hope that helped thank you, thank you fabio most appreciated well, thank you, Fabio. It's also good to sure. hear from uh, someone who has the, the mediumship. To... It, it, it really gives a, a real um, example of everything that we are talking about here. Thank you. Sure, you're welcome. Okay, continue, Emma. Yeah, please. Okay, we're 94 according to the medium's physical qualities. Calm mediums, those who always write at a rather slow pace without the least agitation. Fast mediums, those who write with a speed that they could not voluntarily produce in their normal state. Spirits communicate with them at the speed of lightning. One can say that they possess a superabundance of fluid which enables them to instantly identify with a spirit. Because of the speed, however, this quality has the inconvenience of rendering the writing almost illegible to all except the medium him or herself. It is also very tiring because it use, uselessly wastes a great deal of fluid. Convulsive mediums those who remain in an overexcited, almost feverish state. Their hand, sometimes their entire body, trembles in such a way that they cannot control it. The cause is undoubtedly in their own physical, physical composition, but much also depends on the nature of the spirits who communicate through them. Good and benevolent spirits produce an agreeable and gentle impression. Even ones, on the other hand, a painful impression. These mediums should rarely use their faculty because frequent use can adversely affect their nervous system. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So very little to add over here. Um, here we deal more of the physical, the organic composition of, of that, that medium itself. Um, you have to remember that in um, psychography, it's not a dictation. If it's a dictation, this is not a psychography. It's a, he, it's a um, hearing medium. Hears, right, what it with hears. Naturally hears with the, with the perispirit, not with the physical ears of the physical body. Psychography is receiving a thought and put it down those thoughts in a piece of paper. Well, that is psychography. And then it really is, is the ability of the medium itself to write it in a calm pace or in a very fast pace. Uh, this compulsive, it's even scary. I have never witnessed something like that. Uh, someone that goes into as if they're having a epileptic seizure as they have in a communication. I, again, never seen one. Um, but as Kazak says, I imagine it would be extremely difficult for the medium and perhaps even dangerous um, to be having those kind of, 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 um, of mediumistic trends. And one thing that Kazak has over here, we may not forget that there is also the the quality of the energies of the spirit itself, a suffering, angry, rebellious, upset medium or spirit, will you bring that kind of, of feeling to the, to the medium him or herself also? 
And perhaps that will affect the way it's written. We're talking about psychography here again, okay? Just keep in mind, let's talk about psychography, the way that that person writes. If you remember um, when you're studying heaven and hell, there is periods that when um, you use a medium to write, they would break the pencil all the time, they would um, tear the papers and all those things being expressed. All that anger being expressed when the, the medium was going to write because that energy is also passed through the medium, from the spirit to the medium. So besides the organic quality of the medium, it's him or herself are able to write usually in a more calm pace, or those are very fast, or those are so fast that only them can understand themselves because they retain some of the information. No one else is able to read that handwriting. Um, pretty much like when I write. Um, and, but will also be expressed in a very angry, very upset or spirit who I don't want to be here when I get out of here may bring this compulsive quality um, to that medium, which I, again, I, I think would be a dangerous thing. And um, thank God I have never seen one. Okay. Okay. Ninety-five. According to the medium's moral qualities, we only mention these mediums in passing at this point in order to complete the table, since we shall address them in the following special chapters: the moral influence of mediums obsession, the identity of spirits, and others for which we ask particular attention, for which we ask particular attention. We will observe the influence that the qualities and shortcomings of mediums can exert on the real reliability of the communications and which mediums can rightly consider themselves to be imperfect or good mediums. Continue. Please. Okay, imperfect mediums, obsessed mediums, those who cannot free themselves of importunate and deceptive spirits, but who are nonetheless not fooled by them. Deluded mediums, those who are fooled by deceptive spirits and delude themselves about the nature of the communications they receive. Subjugated mediums, those who are morally and often physically dominated by evil spirits. Frivolous mediums, those who do not take their faculty seriously, who use it only as an entertainment or for useless purposes. Indifferent mediums, these take no moral advantage of the instructions they receive, nor do they change anything about their conduct and habits. The sumptuous mediums, those who claim that they are in touch only with highly evolved spirits, they deem themselves valuable and regard whatever does not come through themselves as inferior and erroneous. Proud mediums, those who flatter themselves because of the communications they receive. They think that they have nothing more to learn about spiritism and do not take to heart lessons they frequently receive from spirits. They are not content with the faculties they currently possess. They want all of them susceptible mediums, a variety of proud medium who take offense at the criticisms leveled at their communications. They are hurt by the least remark against them. When they display what they have received, it is meant to elicit admiration rather than an opinion. They usually have an aversion for persons who do not lavish praise upon them and avoid medium meetings in which they cannot impose themselves and dominate. Let them strut about elsewhere and seek a more complacent audience, or let them keep entirely to themselves. Meetings without their presence lose nothing. Thanks. So meetings in accordance with their moral qualities. <clears throat> Again, I'm going to go back to 
this many times, a good medium is a medium who is able to make him or herself available to a great variety of spirits. Mm -hmm. So we forget someone like Francisco de Cante Xavier, you know, who was an instrument for a variety of very evolved spirit to, to write over 450 books. During his um, leadership meetings, the work of these obsessions, work of helping a suffering spirit, would receive extremely ignorant, extremely rebellious spirits. Ones that the good spirit spirituality would reserve the worst of the spirits for someone like Franciscan Xavier because he was able to deal with those kind of energies because he was a good medium to receive a great variety of, of, of spirits. So it, that's important to remind because we're not going to judge the quality of the medium according to the communication that he or she is receiving. If you work in a work of this obsession, if you work in a work of helping suffering spirits, you should not expect to receive um, eloquent, evolved spirits. You're going to receive difficult, rebellious, angry spirits. And if you are properly trained, if you are a good medium, you deal with those spirits and then and deal with that. So it's very important for me that, that everybody understand that we are not going to to judge the quality of a medium as a person to the kind of uh, experience he or she receives. When you deal with psychography, then you can be a little bit more analytical, not judgmental, analytical. Because again, if I am receiving obscene only writing obscene messages, that's a red flag, something that I have to address, okay? Um, if I go into one obsession, then the spirit is, is holding um, my, my mediumship as their personal instrument. I may not have a way out of it, but I'm not being deceptive. Uh, deceived, I know. I just can't get out of it. And then they have the ones that's being deluded, the one who uh, is being fooled by the deceive, deceive, deceived spirits. And as I said, that way to the presumptuous mediums, those who claim that they are in touch only with the highly evolved spirits, it may be a delusion right then and there. It may may think that that, that they're writing the most eloquent beautiful message that came, I don't know, from Jesus or from, um, or from Mother Teresa. And when you read that, you see that even I can do better, which saying a lot of the bad quality of that thing. Right? And it goes to the theory of things that, again, that he breaks down as much as possible, subjugated mediums. Um, those who are being completely dominated by the spirits almost, it feels like being possessed. We, we do not believe in possession, but it's such a state of, of um, losing its own uh, will of being dominated by other spirits. Frivolous, only waste, waste paper to write in nonsense. Uh, indifference, those, those, they just don't care. And, and all those examples over here, the proud, uh, the proud basis one is wasting an entire um, reincarnation, uh, think that they know itself everything already. Because the point that you, you think you know itself already, you stop learning. And if you stop learning, you are wasting an incarnation, basically. Um, susceptible. I, to me, what I read over here, susceptible, the ones who have a very low uh, self-esteem, very low self-confidence, and um, because of it in association with pride, um, they will avoid places anywhere and where they uh, they can could be questioned, 
where the king they could be contested. They are not able to, to, to deal with that because of their lack of, of self-confidence and their low self-esteem. Um, questions, comments? Okay, we continue then. Mediums for hire. Those who exploit their faculties. Ambitious mediums. Those who, even though they do not actually sell their abilities, nonetheless hope to get something for them. Bad faith mediums. Those who, despite having real abilities, pretend to have others in order to appear more important. However, we cannot label as mediums those persons who, having no mediumistic faculty whatsoever, only produce false phenomena through charlatism. Selfish mediums, those who only employ the abilities for their own use and keep the communications they receive to themselves. Jealous mediums, those who regard with spite those mediums who are more appreciated and more highly developed. All these bad qualities necessarily have their counterpart in good mediums. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. It's so self-explanatory, it's hard to develop anything. Um, mediums for hire. Okay, so I am a real medium. I, I really have uh, the ability to interact peri spirit to peri spirit uh, with spirits and I can write their thoughts. And I, I think it's a good way of making a living. Uh, I don't have to go to school, I don't have to study hard, I just have to sell this, sell this ability to someone who wants, anyone who wants to pay for it. And uh, if I get anyone who is interested in receive communication from the spirits, just pay me and I'll do it. Problem with that is the telephone rings from that to here. If the spirit does not show up, how am I gonna make my money? I have to make my money, I have to pay rent. So if the telephone don't ring, I can just write whatever I want and say that it's come from the spirits. It's a very dangerous thing. There is many ways that we, um, exploit our ability, our, our mediumship. Not only necessarily for money, for dollars, the many, many ways that we want to take advantage of, of this ability by um, perhaps again, gaining status, gaining preferential treatment, uh, being noted as a it's someone that you that people you look forward to to be with because has these extra powers. Many ways they can exploit this ability. Not understand that if it's if we developed, if we are able to use it, is for our education. Is for something to be done for our growth. You know, not as a means of conquering power, being financial or otherwise social social stats or anything else. So there's many ways that you can exploit um, the, this faculty if we are uneducated. And that's why in the spiritualism, we say that ministry with Jesus, a work of charity, a work of self-educating, self-educating and educating others in the process. So all of these means of higher, ambitious, good faith, or bad faith mediums, selfish mediums, someone who receives communication and keeps for himself. We must question why is a jealous one, the one who does not accept the idea that perhaps there are other mediums over there with perhaps better ability, they have to be number one. And that is on a competition, a competitive level. It's, it all shows our ignorance as, as human beings and um, leadership is not reserved only for the more educated. Even us ignorant ones may come in with ability uh, for, 
food to be mediums, but if we do not educate ourselves, we may fall in these subgroups, the cardiac places over here. I yeah. think our time is up, let me see. Yep, right on time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any question, any comments? Yeah, um, I was gonna ask you, what good is it keeping keeping it to themselves, the selfish ones? I mean, I, I understand what you just said, that they have no knowledge, they don't understand, but keeping it to themselves, what are they gonna do with it? I mean. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good question, I have no idea. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, um, I have no idea. I mean, if you have the ability of playing, let's say, the the guitar and like good at that, but you lock yourself in the bathroom and only play guitar for yourself, I mean, what's the good of it? I, I don't know if you're not going to share that ability with others. Um, it beats me. I have no idea why anyone wants to do, want to do that. But you just said it. You, you answered it already. You said it's because they don't know any better. I mean... <laughs> You have the ability and if you use it wisely, it's benefit for yourself and everyone out there in the world. But to say, I mean, to be so selfish, well, it's a part of uh, learning and growing, so. Yeah, which goes to all other abilities, right? If you have a talent and, 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 and you keep inside of the closet, you know, a waste of potential, but I think we will be held responsible. Remember that you are responsible not only for the for the bad that we do, but also for the good that we could have done and chose not to do it. Mm -hmm. I think it's a big responsibility being a medium and something that you should mm -hmm. try to use for the to the best of our abilities. Until they until they they know, you know, they'll they'll learn one day, I'm sure. Oh, we're selfish. Okay. But perhaps because they don't know any better, never been exposed to the beauty of this doctrine. Right. Absolutely that, for sure. They don't know any better. So, an experience for them to uh, one day understand. Yep. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Uh, glad to close the prayer. Okay. Absolutely. To all spiritual benefactors, our guardian angels, our Christ, with our hearts full of gratitude, we thank you for the opportunity of being here and studying all about special mediums, to distinguish one from the other, to learn, to put into practice, to understand what mediumship is all about. We are so grateful. We thank you, dear Lord. We ask as we leave here today, we continue to pray for all our brothers and sisters that are going through so much heartaches and through this pandemic, and it continues. Allow us to continue to pray to help those in need in hospitals and hospices, all that are suffering, dear Lord, for the homeless. We keep our prayers in our hearts for all. And we thank you, dear Lord, for allowing us here again, gathered in continuous learning, and be able to continue through our classes throughout the week and continue with prayers in our hearts, giving gratitude with our hearts. Thank you, dear Lord. And we ask as we leave here today to return again next week and keep our studies at home and in our classes. We thank you, dear Lord. And with that in mind, we ask permission to close our meeting tonight. So be it.